Next stage inside the life cycle of a, of a midge, or coronamid as, as scientifically known to most of the general public, is once it gets from a larva stage, it goes to pupa. Pupa has a defined way of where they live in the water column and all the rest, but it is probably 80% of a trout's diet in most of water lakes. So, being that said, this is probably a very popular pattern. Yeah, with most patterns, they come in a multitude of colors. Uh, what I found out for the California area is that this, this particular fly is going to have a gold bead with an olive body and a gold wire. Now, it's very simple in the way that I tie it, but very methodical at the same time that you'll find out when I start getting into it. But what I use is a 2457 hook, either in a size 16 or a size 14. Um, I'm also using dot thread. Most people think that's too small, but it helps define and make the contours of the fly a lot smoother. And if I make mistakes, I can cover it up with it as well. The other thing that I use is the ultra wire in a small. Um, it helps me to be able to define the ribs on what the pupa pattern is actually going to look like. Um, so I'll get started. Um, the first thing that, that you have to do is we got to get the bead on, on the hook itself. So what I do is down the bottom I wet my finger and I actually have it so where I'm going to thread it through it's real easy to put the bead on. Okay? So we're going to get the bead on there. And then it's kind of a methodical way of the way I do it but I try and, and, and what you'll see with most um, pupa patterns is that it almost looks like a, a long cylindrical snow cone. So for me to be able to build up that area, I'll start off with a certain amount of strokes going here and there and back and forth in order to build it up. And what that allows me to do is have a smoother contour once I finish the fly off. So starting off, take it straight right where the bead's at and I take it 10 wraps. Now, you notice the same thing that I did earlier, but I use the thread or the tag end of the thread in order to be able to wrap everything side by side, so that way I have a smooth contour. Now, what I do is I take that same 10 wraps and I go right back over it side by side back to the head of the fly. Okay. I do the same thing coming across again. And this is purely just to build up the head portion of the pupa fly itself. Okay. And I go back one more time. So now I have basically a base pronounced right there to help me out. Going back down, I hit my 10 strides, and I go 10 more. Real nine. Real nine for the real. It's a little bit bulky right there, it's not real even, so what I do is I take it back all the way now, 20 wraps all the way back up to the bead head. Okay, now that I have that kind of build up and there's a little contour there, then I go side by side all the way down to the end of the hook. With a size 14, it's typically about 40 reps that I do side by side all the way down. So we start. Now that sets me up with straight body cover and all the rest. And so now it's starting to take a little bit of shape as to contour of the fly itself. <laughs> with the gold wire. <laughs> what 
what I do is, in order to keep a perfect round contour, I could tie the wire up at the top and use this as a gauge, but I purposely don't do that. In the bottom of a pupa pattern itself, or the actual pupas that are in the water, in the bottom of the tail, it actually starts to get larger. Now, what I end up doing with the wire, since there is a section on the back of a midge that actually starts to get larger, I slide this over one thread, stop it right where it starts to get covered, and I take five wraps right over, side by side. So now I have my wire put in. What I do now is I work my way back side by side all the way up until I come to the end of the fly again. I'll tell you what, if I didn't have the magnifying glass, there is no way I could do this. Okay, one thing you have to watch out for is sometimes the bead will get off center. So before you start the next step, make sure that the bead is back down. What ends up happening is sometimes the thread will get pushed underneath it where the bead will sit off set. So once you put it back into place, now you have something that doesn't look awkward when, when you're actually trying to tie. So your symmetry stays the same all the way through. Okay. What I do now is I take the wire and I start from the bottom. Typically with most midges in the water, and I'm kind of anal about that, but the pictures that we've taken in the past and the specimens that I have always have anywhere between six and seven ribs. So on all of my flies, I tie it with that. Most production flies, you're going to see anywhere between four and five ribs. So it makes it a little bit more unique as to what I tie. There's no magic recipe for it, but what you're trying to do is keep it as even as possible all the way through while you're wrapping. So I don't have a anything that helps me to keep that except for the portion of what my eyes are seeing. So, I take it at an angle, I start my first wrap. You put it on a nail, you getting it off the nail. But it works pretty well. With this one, because it's a size 14, I am actually going to make seven, seven wraps. And if you look at where the last two wraps goes, if you looked at the way that I contoured it earlier, it hits those 10 wrap areas right where there's a gap. So now it fills it in where now all of a sudden it becomes very, very smooth all the way through as far as contour goes. Take the thread. Get in there, like, July. So, like, down, and then what I do is I don't cut the wire, but I actually start to move the wire back and forth. Where it breaks itself. Okay. A lot of times you don't have a scissor small enough to be able to cut that off. Now, going back down to finish it off, build up the head area just a little bit. I can take it right back down to where my first wrap is, my first rip, and then from there I go to finish it. What I do is I take about 10 to 12 wraps, but the same thing is I go side by side all the way back up. So, it starts. <laughs> I wrap it all the way until the thread comes just about 
flush with the width of the beam. So you have a smooth this one. Finish it off. What I do is I douse the entire floor. And what that adds is a consistency of color to it, but at the same time it adds durability to the fly as well. This one works pretty well.